When you first set up the total station, try and set the tripod platform roughly level. This doesn't have to be perfect, as when you first turn it on, it will go through an auto leveling procedure, which takes about a minute. Note that the total station needs to have a clear line of sight to all of the beacons. Next, pair the total station to your PC via Bluetooth. After communication is established, click on Survey Beacons and the Beacon Setup window will appear. Click on the button labelled Set North. Physically turn the robot head to point in the direction you wish to nominate as north to set the Y axis and then measure the height of the robot to the ground. Enter this height into the pop-up box on the software and click OK. Now you can start setting up the beacons. The VIPS receiver will need at least four beacons in view at any one time, however, in order to get good accuracy, we recommend that you use six or more. Get the beacons as high as possible, but do try to vary the height as much as possible to get good geometry for the height calculation. If the beacon is mounted in the roof, it can be mounted upside down. By placing a prism on top of each of the beacons, it allows the total station to locate their positions. Click the Add Beacon button and make sure the beacon orientation icon is correct for your setup. Enter the IDs found on the top and bottom of each beacon. Switch the laser on using the software and turn the robot head by hand to roughly line up with the first beacon. You can use the sweep laser function to move the laser up and down, which makes it easier to line up. Once lined up, use turn tracking on to lock the robot to the prism. This should only take a few seconds and the position data from the total station will turn green. You can now survey the beacon in. Repeat this process for all the beacons in your setup. Once you've carried out the full survey, click the Export to VIPS Setup button and save the survey file. Now switch to the VIPS Site Configuration software, create a new file and enter in your origin coordinates. Ensure the VB3i is connected and you are using the indoor only mode. Select the beacons page and load in your survey file. The ping table will now update and you'll be able to upload the file to the rover. Measure the test vehicle's width and place the rover on a solid base at the midpoint, connecting the rover to the V-Box using the 7-pin LIMO connector. To map the vehicle's size and shape, you will need to measure the offsets from the rover's location and enter these points into the Vehicle Overlay window in V-Box Test Suite. Open the Park Assist plugin within VBox Test Suite and place the pole at the end of the first lane marking, making sure it's level. Click on Survey Lane from the Lane 1 drop down, followed by Add Point. Walk to the end of the first lane and again click Add Point, and then save the lane. Repeat this process for the other two lanes, making sure you are further out from the edge than the lane you have previously surveyed. When all three lanes have been surveyed and saved, the software settings window will show an accurate diagram of the mapped parking bay. You can now click OK. To calibrate the Kalman filter, drive in figures of eight. If room is limited, dynamic left and right turns will suffice, followed by straight lines of acceleration before testing. You can now begin testing with the VIPS beacons, relaying accurate positional data to the test vehicle in place of GPS. Using VBOX Test Suite in online mode, 
The distance from the mapped vehicle overlay to the surveyed parking bay can be viewed in real time, with the closest point of contact shown to within 2 centimeters accuracy.